The opening scene features an Atlas Centaur, a four-stage rocket that is being launched into deep space. The rocket is designed in such a way that it uses energy from the sun and gravitational pull of neighboring planets to cross the solar system. This space probe consists of information about the human race, along with the map of the Earth. Its prime mission is to find intelligent life forms like that on our planet. Whoa, let's not give us too much credit. The scene then cuts to a school teacher, Neil Clark, who is being introduced as one of Britain's greatest writers of all time. He is interviewed by a beautiful woman, Catherine, regarding his best-selling novel. However, Neil's speech is interrupted by his dog, Dennis, barking from the crowd. Suddenly, more dogs enter the venue, causing absolute chaos. Neil then abruptly wakes up in his apartment, revealing the entire scenario to be a dream. Meanwhile, his dog keeps on barking until his neighbor Fiona comes to his door to complain as usual. This time, she tells him to control his dog or else she will have to contact the authorities. Afterwards, Neil takes his dog out for a walk when he comes across another neighbor, Catherine West. He tells her that he just dreamt of her giving him an award for his new novel. Maybe don't tell her that, stupid. She asks him if he has finished the book in real life yet, to which he replies that he's almost done. It turns out Neil has a crush on her and has for a long time, but he is too too embarrassed to tell her in person. In the meantime, in outer space, the Atlas Centaur probe is sucked into a tube connected to a gigantic jellyfish-shaped alien ship. Inside, the Extraterrestrial Galactic Council inspects the probe and finds the illustrations along with a peaceful message. Following this, they assess the Earth and debate whether to destroy it or consider humanity for council membership. One of them thinks Earthlings are barbaric and that they should destroy Earth for the moral well-being of the intergalactic community. However, another kinder council member suggests that humans should be given a chance to prove themselves. If they succeed, they can join the society of superior species. Back on Earth, Catherine is at her office, but she's been arguing on the phone with Grant, a man who's obsessed with her. Just then, her boss shows up and asks her to rewrite the questions for her next TV interview, which happens to be with a best-selling author. She tells her to focus more on the author's past scandals, with the intention of tarnishing his reputation. Catherine protects tests, asserting the author's widespread popularity, but her objections are disregarded. Shortly after, she is approached by the show's producer, James, who tells her that the audience prefers gossip and character assassination over general interviews. In space, the Galactic Council makes a decision to conduct a test. They'll select a random human and give them limitless power to do absolutely anything. If this chosen individual utilizes these powers for good, humanity will be embraced into the Council. Otherwise, the entire planet will be destroyed. Destroyed. We're doomed. The council then randomly selects Neil as Earth's representative, granting him 10 days to demonstrate that the planet is worth saving. After this, they transfer the extraordinary powers to Neil, who just fell off his bike due to a van. Unaware of his new power, he curses the van driver, causing the vehicle to go out of control. On the other hand, Catherine meets with her best friend Rosie at a cafe and confides in her about Grant. In response, her friend suggests considering Neil, whom she also thinks is likable. Meanwhile, Neil arrives at school late. Due to his accident, he tries to slip past the principal's office unnoticed, but is caught. The principal, frustrated by his habitual tardiness, reprimands him and wishes to replace him if he could. Neil then proceeds to his classroom, but he hesitates to enter when he sees his rowdy students. Later on, he has his lunch with his colleague, Ray, who seems to be upset because he's unable to impress his crush, Dorothy. He then asks Neil about one thing he would do if he had unlimited power. Our hero humorously mentions, make his gog regurgitate his notes that he swallowed. Unbeknownst to him, Dennis actually throws up the notes that magically become intact. He adds that if he really wanted to improve his life, he'd have alien spaceships destroy the classroom of students that he hates. All of a sudden, they hear a loud explosion. Upon rushing to check, they see that the classroom is indeed destroyed. In the aftermath, Neil returns home and starts talking to Dennis. He says that the incident was just a coincidence because he wouldn't harm anyone if given the power. To prove that he's powerless, he casually orders his dog's mess to clean itself. Much to his surprise, Dennis's poop walks towards the bathroom and dives into the toilet. Geronimo! 
thinking that he's hallucinating, he rushes to the kitchen and grabs a drink. During this, he accidentally spills the whiskey bottle. To test his abilities again, he wishes for the whiskey to get back into the bottle. At first, nothing happens, but when he tries a second time while waving his hand, the liquid surprisingly snakes back into its bottle, leaving him in utter shock. Now that Neil realizes he can do anything by simply waving his hand, he wishes his old whiskey to be replaced with a new one. Unexpectedly, the bottle hops out and breaks into a nearby liquor store, triggering the alarm. He then runs away, but the police start chasing him. Just when he is about to be caught, Neil wishes to be at home eating with his dog. Lo and behold, his wish comes true, and he vanishes from the scene. So far, Neil has killed a bunch of kids, thrown out a bunch of poop, and robbed a liquor store. I wonder what the aliens think. Once home, Neil realizes that the earlier explosion was actually caused by him. In an attempt to make things right, he makes a wish for everyone who has ever passed to be alive again. As a result, all the dead people rise up from the cemetery and approach his house. Seeing this, Neil hurriedly clarifies that only those who died in the prior explosion should be returned to life. He soon comes up with a better idea and wishes for the explosion to have never happened. This reverses everything, and he finds himself in the school cafeteria again. After this, he goes to his class and sees the students are back in their irritating state. He then wishes that all of his students become kind and diligent. His wish is immediately granted, and the classroom becomes quiet unlike before. Neil just restructured the brain chemistry of a bunch of children. Way to go, Neil. Afterwards, Neil notices the principal from a distance and waves his hand to make him be nice to him. He then walks past him and receives praise. Later, in the staff room, Neil observes Ray trying to talk to Dorothy, but is consistently rebuffed. Feeling bad, he wishes for the woman to worship his friend, and seconds later, it happens. That's definitely a criminal offense. On his way home, Neil playfully wishes to become the president of the US, which results in numbers of armed guards arriving at the scene and escorting him to the car. Soon after, they are ambushed by some assailants, prompting Neil to wish himself back home. Later, he stands in front of the bathroom and makes weird wishes, such as having the body of Albert Einstein. Weird choice, that dude was shaped like an egg. Then, he chooses the body of a great athlete, and so on. Before retiring to bed, he also wishes to see Catherine's room downstairs. Upon doing so, he notices her in undergarments, ironing her clothes. He accidentally makes a noise which catches her attention. Thus, he hastily reverses the process, and also makes her forget what just happened. How have the aliens not blown up the planet yet? The following day, Neil confides his exceptional power in Ray, who initially refuses to believe it. To prove it, he makes a skeleton talk and jump outside. He also performs some magic, such as covering the entire room with flowers. All of these demonstrations ultimately convince Ray, leaving him in shock. Elsewhere, Grant approaches Catherine in the street and tries to convince her to go on a date with him. However, she declines and firmly asks him to leave. Before departing, he hands her the keys to his apartment in case she changes her mind. Later that night, Catherine is in her apartment talking to her best friend about the guys in her life. During this, she expresses her liking towards Neil, so Rosie suggests that she approach him. Meanwhile, in space, a scientist alien reports that the galactic power has some glitches in it. In order to fix it, they have to take back the power that has been given to Neil for a while. At the same time, Neil, unaware that he has lost his power, makes a wish for Catherine to be in love with him. Coincidentally, he hears a knock on the door, and it's Catherine. She unexpectedly kisses him, and the two end up spending a night together. Unbeknownst to them, they're being watched by the stalker, Grant. The next morning, the alien scientist fixes the power glitch and returns it to Neil. Upon waking up, Neil alters the rainy weather to sunny and has his clothes dress him. While having breakfast, he uses his power to give his dog the ability to speak. Dennis then starts talking about his favorite biscuit and also expresses how much he loves Neil. Ride humpier if you'd let me, Neil. <laughs> Not long after, Catherine shows up and apologizes to him for her unexpected behavior last night. Just then, she hears Dennis's voice from the toilet, and Neil pretends that he is a plumber. However, when the dog screams, I love you, Catherine believes that Neil is gay, prompting her to storm off in anger. In an attempt to explain himself, he follows her and wishes to be on the same bus that she's on. However, he ends up on the bus roof and quickly revises his wish. In the meantime, Ray sees Dorothy worshipping him in her lab, along with some other disciples. Realizing that it's all done by Neil, he rushes in search of him. Shortly after, he catches him exiting the bus. He tells him to make things right, but because Neil is in a hurry, he turns Ray into a sausage and continues to follow Catherine. He tries to explain everything to her, but the latter doesn't listen and leaves. Neil then finally reverts his friend back to his original form. Later, in the evening, Catherine returns to her apartment, where Grant is waiting for her. Shocked, she lets out a scream.
scream and immediately locks the door from the outside. Hearing this, Neil rushes to her and invites her to hide at his place. The two then have dinner together, and Neil finally decides to reveal his superpowers. This is why you love me. Isn't that great? But before he can prove it to her, Grant breaks into the apartment and starts quarreling with Neil. Catherine tries to stop them, but when they persist, she leaves the place in anger. Following this, Neil uses his powers to stick him in the walls and place him in a flower pot. He then tells Grant that he can easily provide him with millions of dollars, if he's nice, but can also make him disappear with a mere wave of his hand. This revelation leaves Grant in a state of shock. Just then, Neil gets distracted by his dog, and Grant takes the opportunity to knock him down from behind. A while later, he regains his consciousness and finds himself restrained in Grant's apartment. The latter has taken Dennis hostage and threatens him to start fulfilling a list of wishes in front of him. These wishes include providing big ears and webbed feet to all the Englishmen, and changing the color of British police's uniform to pink. Grant is a friggin' idiot. On the other hand, Catherine suddenly realizes that Neil might be in danger and returns back to his apartment. There, she finds Ray hiding in a closet from Dorothy's pursuit. The two then head to Grant's house in search of Neil. In the meantime, Grant is now seen dressed up as a high-ranking officer covered with medals. A short while after, Catherine and Ray arrive to rescue Neil, who then reverses all of Grant's wishes before turning him into a dog. He also stops Dorothy from worshipping Ray, ultimately bringing everything back to normal. But now, everyone's disappointed in him because of problems he's put them through. Later, Neil awaits Catherine's return home and apologizes for everything. However, she asserts that she cannot be with someone who might make her do things against her will. This leaves the man devastated, prompting him to return to his place sadly. Realizing that he was being selfish the entire time, he now decides to use his powers to solve the world's problems. Finally, he then grants everyone as much food as they want and says that the wars shouldn't happen for any reason. He also grants every person their own dream house and wishes for the reversion of global warming. However, this all backfires when worldwide obesity flares. All land, including the desert, gets taken over for houses, and the planet falls into a global ice age. Faced with the unintended consequences, Neil decides to reverse all of his wishes. Disheartened by his personal life and unsuccessful attempts to improve the world, Neil contemplates committing the unthinkable. He jumps off the bridge, but Dennis also leaps off after him. As a result, Neil is forced to rescue his pet and consequently himself. Afterward, Dennis tells his master to give the power to him, emphasizing his unwavering obedience and lack of selfish intentions. Neil thinks for a while and obliges. Man, a lot of people are about to get humped. Meanwhile, the aliens decide that Earth is not worthy. It turns out that the Galactic Council has an inverted understanding of morality. It sees dominance as good and weakness as evil. And the fact of Neil trying to end wars and make the lives of others better is considered to be a sign of weakness. Believing that the Earthlings are weak, the aliens finally decide to destroy Earth. But in an unexpected turn of events, Dennis, who now possesses all the power, wishes that the source of power be destroyed. This results in the destruction of the alien spaceship, as well as the associated planets, reverting Neil back to his apartment. The next day, Neil, now without the powers, musters the courage to ask Catherine out for dinner. Much to his elation, she accepts his proposal. On the other hand, it's revealed that Dennis still retains the powers, since he only wished for the source of the power to be destroyed, not the powers themselves. Is the genocide of the alien species really a happy ending? I don't know. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.